Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here in selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my wonderful Ruby guest we had here just a few weeks ago is Brenda Batista, and we're going to be talking today about relationships, how to build trust in relationships. Everything you do is a relationship. The last show we did is about knowing yourself, how to lead yourself, how to be that leadership voice and how it impacts your life, work and relationships. And because relationships kept coming up in the show, we decided to do a show on relationships. And she has, we've got to learn the four filters everyone uses in deciding if they trust us. What is your barrier to establishing trust? How do we undermine our ability to establish trust? Trust is a big thing. and some Something that uh, we find it very hard to have relationships with if we are in distrust of one another. But I think one of the most important relationships that we have, because we have relationships with everyone and everything out there, is the relationship with self. And if we don't trust ourselves and we don't know how to navigate that relationship with self, we kind of find it very difficult to have that relationship with everyone else. Welcome back, Brenda. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me again. My pleasure. Just a disclaimer, folks, I do have a cold. I promise not to cough and splutter on air, but just do forgive me if you keep seeing a tissue going to my nose. Uh, a gift from my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful little kids. We love them anyway. Um, relationships. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, um, we take them for granted, don't we? And we really don't actually understand them or our input or the impact of them. Yeah, really both. And, and you made a good point in the introduction, and that is the relationship we have with ourself. It really starts, and this is Genesis, isn't it? Because mm. we, we tell ourselves stories. We talk to ourselves. We all talk to ourselves, whether we admit it or not. We do. We do and it's not a sign of madness, folks. I promise no, you. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it, it is often healthy, sometimes mm. Sometimes it's the best advice that we can get. And sometimes it's the worst mm -hmm. because we replay things that happened in the past. We have those limiting beliefs, those constraints that we put on ourselves. And then sometimes we, we project that out, meaning we think that that's how others see us. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that colors the relationship, right? Because we were projecting onto them how we think about ourselves and I think sometimes unfairly yes um and unfair to ourselves because I think we're harsh on ourselves often and we should be more gentle and, and graceful to ourselves as well as to others but because we I think we often just presume that others um respond or act in the same way mm. and, so, and so that's you know really the the I'm going to call it influence right Inf the influence we have on ourselves and our self-talk is important. And then I think it projects onto when we, we, um, you know, try to create, create the relationships and create influence with others as well. Yeah. We wonder why people are negative back to us, but are they just projecting back your own negativity? Could be right. Because if we've put them in a defensive mode somehow, mm -hmm. <laughs> then certainly they will. Yes. I, I like the, I like the example of, are you mad? No. Mm -hmm. Are you mad? No, are you mad? By the time you ask me the fifth or sixth time, the answer is yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, I think our also our own disgruntledness. You know, the if we're frustrated with the world or frustrated with our lives or loved ones or anything like this, we project that on other people, and we kind of kind of see that frustration, for a better word in the other people, you know, like you, you nitpick the other people and you take it out on the other people. Um, so, you know, it's like, don't bring your dosh, dosh, dash, dad to the conversation, to other relationships. That, that's true. Be, because when we think of, um, 
Well, when we think of um, influence, right, it's whether it's how we're how are we impacting or what's the effect we're having on somebody else in their development? So um, back to the young, young children, mm -hmm. we impact their development by the words we say, and we're actually implanting some of that future self-talk. Mm. Like a lot of our self-talk comes from what somebody else said to us earlier at a very formative age. And it kind of stuck like, Oh, you're a genius. Okay. I'm a genius. And you got to carry that with you. <laughs> You're good for nothing. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Great. I'm good for nothing. But it replays. Yes. Even if it's quieter, the volume is turned down because as we age, we, we learn how to turn the volume down sometimes. But in this formative years, the volume goes way up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have this, you're right. I am good for nothing. Why am I even here? And that, that self doubt and all of that. But then sometimes we project it as you said onto others because like oh, you know why are you better than i am or we just do these weird comparison things that really isn't fair to the other person it isn't fair to ourselves either and um you know we, we we're, we're search always searching for a way to get past the transaction of 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 a relationship so what i mean by that is um a kind of a transactional trust, right? Yeah. If, if I if I have a hundred dollar bill and I, I place it on the table and in a meeting room and I'm in a meeting with my colleagues, I fundamentally trust that my hundred dollars will still be there when I return from the restroom, right? So I've yeah. left it unattended for a little bit, but I trust them transactionally that they're not going to go great mm -hmm. and grab and take off with it. However, if I were to leave that hundred dollar bill, hmm, I don't know, on the restaurant table, and and go to the restroom and come back. I doubt it would still be there. Assuming perceived as a tip, <laughs> right? Right. Thank you. Or or or, or even if the the person who maybe it should have been a tip for, it, yeah. um, didn't see it. Somebody else like, yeah, seriously, you left them a hundred. Yeah. Right. There's there's no trust. There's there's nothing there. We haven't created. But that's a transactional trust, right? Right. That I trust that that you do that. But to get to true relationship. We have to lower our own, our own wall of self-preservation that is keeping us safe because we put it up for safety purposes mm -hmm. until I know I can trust you. Once I, I know can. I can trust you, I start to lower it. Um, and it's different for everybody, like what will make it go up or down. Well, there's always those little warning signs, right? You know, you've um, been burned by somebody else in the past and somebody you trust suddenly says something or does something and it triggers. And automatically you assume that they're going to do the same to you as the other person did to you because they made a, may have made a comment. And we can't go by that assumption, can we? You know, No. And, and that's really what, what I find is that the, the kind of the four characteristics that we all or the filters, I should say, that we all use when establishing that trust is first is character. Mm -hmm. um, are you somebody that, are you a person of integrity? So back to my coworker example, there are people of integrity, right? So we, we all come together to transact business and we're all on the same level um, from that standpoint. So I know your character, I trust you. When I'm in a, a public space, I don't know everybody's character, actually. Right. You can presume somebody's about some of the character, depending on where you are. So that, that's, that's kind of the first lever, if you will, that I'm, I'm looking at. And then we say, do I like you? Mm. So back to your behavioral question. Mm -hmm. Do I connect with you? Do I enjoy spending time with you? And, and the reason that was important based off what you just said is if you say something or you remind me of, mm. right? You, you, you remind me of, of Mike. And you're like, oh, was that good or was that bad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope it's a good thing. Is Mike your friend? Or yes. Friend of me? Or like, tell me where I'm ending up. And it's funny because that, that's how we, when we meet people or we're first creating those relationships, that's how we, we put them, we cast them in this, this mold because we really don't know them for them yet. Right. But you do something that reminds me of, oh, my mm. favorite person in the whole world. Right. You do something that reminds me of, the person I try to avoid all the time. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately you, you end up with a kind of weird halo effect, but that's really the chemistry factor. Like yeah. I get to determine our chemistry. We do it pretty quickly. 
when, when we meet people and we're interacting with them. Um, but then thirdly, we, we look at competency. Mm -hmm. So do I think you're competent or are you projecting yourself in a confident way? And I don't mean arrogance right? mm -hmm. because it definitely turns people off, but um, do you have confidence in what you're saying to me that I I can help you solve this problem. Oh my gosh, I've so been there, right? Mm. They're, they're really, you're bringing something of value. Yes. You've been there and you've got the empathy, but I feel competency behind that. And then the last part is credibility. Um, so do you really present your competence in a way that really tells me that you can, even though it was done someplace else or was in a different scenario, you can relate to me? And you can apply what you know to my situation and you're listening to me. Yeah. The, the credibility part is you're listening, trying to define the harmony, if you will, in, in our experiences and just bring that together so that you're, you're going to really be there for me. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird. Like on the first, it's not, it's not the first meeting. Let's get married type of thing. It's not like yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's really about, the connection that you're listening to what I say. Yeah. And you're seeking in your own experiences, like, oh yeah, that time that we can relate here. We're, we're common in this way and really seeking that, 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 you know, connection. I think we have to kind of draw a line with understanding what relatability is to comparison, because I think when we step into comparison, it can become rather deadly. You know, we're kind of a downward spiral of I'm comparing you to, or I'm comparing <clears throat> myself to someone. But if you can relate to someone, I think it's a different um, approach and a different terminology um, to it rather than comparing. Because I think comparing could be really, you know, you're comparing yourself to um, some somebody on Facebook or you know a friend I want to be like them I want to you know and there but the relatability oh I, we've got some synergy together you know that's something different isn't it mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and and it's it's an important thing to ask yourself what uh what barriers do I really have mm. like to overcoming trust because I back to what we we're saying about projecting it onto somebody else because we presume that's what you're if you mm -hmm. and I are creating a relationship for the first time, whatever my barriers are, I'm going to project them onto you thinking, oh, you have the same. Right. Assumption again. Yes. Yeah. Don't assume. Ask. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's allowing too, isn't it? Allowing a relationship to unfold. You don't mm -hmm. know what kind of relationship you're going to have with people. You don't know, are they feeling a bit nervous? You know, um, are they distracted by something else at that time? And it's like, We've become so instant, you know, with Instagram and everything else. It's like, well, if we don't snap straight away, there can't be anything there. And it's like sometimes you just have, you know, you feel something, you know, there's something there, a connection, but allow it to grow. Don't demand it to grow. Mm, that's very true. And it, it, it's it's having the patience, like you said, to let it to let it develop. And, and frankly, some people need that space. Mm. So kind of hearkening back to, to our, our last conversation, I had mentioned there are five leadership voices of five types. Mm -hmm. And there's one that I, I think I designate as kind of the puppy dog, mm -hmm. uh, the connector. They mm -hmm. love people and they, they love connecting people to people. Mm -hmm. But they do it instantly because in their mind, we are BFFs yeah. from the moment we meet. And they're sincere about that. Mm -hmm. So there's no insincerity. And they're, yeah. they, in their minds, they're being very credible with this extension this olive more than an olive branch my gosh come come stay at my home the next time you're in town like wait mm -hmm. i just met you that's weird yeah but to them that's normal mm -hmm. and then you know see my reaction is that's not i'm, I'm not that type right i need more time just to, to understand because i'm not i'm a, not a feeler I'm more the thinker side mm -hmm. of oh well why do you want to be best friends? <laughs> Why yeah. are you extending What's this the agenda? <laughs> exactly. So to me, you know, I'm going to focus more on your competency, credibility side of the filters. That's what my filters are, are focused. Um, literally more there sometimes. Yeah. Um, then on being, then do I really like you? Or mm. do we have a chemistry? Because I, I'm more for, 
what are what are we trying to achieve? Right. Right. And so knowing those different dynamics of the feelers, <coughs> excuse me, the feelers also have that, they're going to focus on the character and chemistry. And the feelers, the, the folks again, are that, that connector, that person just loves people. The guardian, which is the person that, that likes to um, really um, be the steward of resources mm-hmm. and, and be the, are we efficient? Where are we going? And, you know, this very specific to questions, but they want, they want to make sure that we're connecting on the, on the same level. And then the, the creative feeler type is, is going to go for the character and chemistry. But when you look at the um, pioneer, who is more of a person that is, is considered a really kind of a, a thinker, they want to know you're competent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, for them, there's no You're role, not right? full of BS. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we have stuff to do and we've got things to achieve. So I'm not all into the fluffy mm. uh, talk unless it's a talk, unless it's a debate, because we love debates. All right. Yes. You know, debate something because boy, we're achieving and we're going to determine which of us is smarter. <laughs> they like that. Right. And then other, other types don't, the nurturer person is going to be like, I don't want to fight you. Right. I just want to know about you. Tell me about yeah. your family. How's it going? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we need to know, you know, what kind of type we are because that's how we're coming off to people. And that's also will show us what we're attracted to. Mm-hmm. whom we're attracted to and why we're attracted to them. As you said, you know, people who love those debates, they want to have those intense conversations. And, you know, I, my son is like that. You know, everything is into the, the deep, but the why, you know, getting into it. And, and um, I don't mind a debate to a point, but then I'm also uh, very much to the, well, you know, um, sometimes you just have to step back and allow and let things unfold and uh, and they will show you the way because you can't pick every battle. So I think it's it's okay to have those opposites, but also to know your boundaries in that. You know, that that's where in that respect of the relationship is to know, okay, I can't go down there, right? Um, and let's kind of not call it a draw, but to just ag- agree to disagree or mm-hmm. just, to, you know, uh, change channels and go somewhere else. So we want to be confident enough in our relationships to be able to say, I don't want to go down there anymore, right? And without feeling, I'm offending you, will you still like me? Right? And I think that is one of the insecurities in building any form of relationships is, if I say something you don't like, will you still like me? And it's our own insecurities that come out and that makes us go and do things and say things that are out of our character because we're just wanting to please people so they can still be in our arena. Absolutely. And, and that's really part of what drives our self-preservation wall, our mm-hmm. protection up. And it pe- depends, of course, on the situation, but usually we're trying to quote unquote save face. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, and so I've got to put that up in, in kind of the workplace scenario. You'll find that, um, I'm worried. Well, I think it was beyond this. I think if you know, as people, if you you run your own business or whatever, it's imposter syndrome. Somebody's going to find me out that right. I don't know everything or yeah. I'm not as, as competent or I'm in the wrong position. I mm-hmm. shouldn't have this job. Just back again, all those doubts. Yeah. When we started, we said, what you say to yourself. Yes. Is what you project onto others. Right. And that is exactly what tra- trains that makes your wall go up mm-hmm. because all that self-talk, that self-doubt is what you think other people are thinking about you. So you're like, heck no, I'm not going to show you that I'm incompetent. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that I'm uncertain. I'm not, you know, you just, you just, you, you block it. And, mm. and unfortunately, I think we end up blocking too many yeah. potential relationships that could be just so enriching and dynamic and, just good for the soul, right? Just feed the yeah. soul because we're so afraid to let those in. Um, self-judgment, that, right? That yeah. self-judgment then becomes judgment on others. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And worse when we do it to others, right? Because we start- Projecting again your own insecurity by judging others. 
right? Yes. I mean, what is judgment? You're not the same as me or you're doing something different to me. So therefore it must be wrong because I must be right. But we know we're insecure because otherwise we would accept that you are right in your uh, mm -hmm. thought process. I'm right in mine. It's just different perspectives. And we would accept that without judgment. Mm -hmm. It's very hard, very hard to do. Mm -hmm. And it's a practice, right? Yes. Because we're always mindfulness. <laughs> we're always working on it if you're mm -hmm. aware of it. So that, you know, I, I think for anybody who, who who listens or is listening here, that's it. You are somebody who's on that path to for self-awareness. Like, yes, this is not right. I'm, I'm going to make a difference starting with me. Yeah. And it's a positive influence back to the influence word in the circles of people we interact with certainly starts with self. Then it goes to family, mm -hmm. whether family living with you, family, you know, cousins, so forth. They know the different, right. They feel the difference. They feel that, that, that ripple that you're, you're dropping the stone yeah. in the middle. It starts with you and it starts to wave out then to your, your team, <coughs> excuse me, whether um, work or however, and then community because it it transcends all of that um by just showing up and role modeling how we would like things to be even though it's hard and that's the reason i say it's a practice because you're, you're always going to find that person like oh you know you just got on my last nerve <laughs> yes <laughs> you know? yes and you hit me or you hit me at the right time i'm super stressed i got so much stuff to do what do you want right you, you know we all we all have those moments because we're human yeah um but to know like oh I'm so sorry. Let me, let me backtrack. I'm sorry. I snapped at you. This is what I have going on. It's not your worry. I projected on you. I'm sorry, but it, it just, you know, it's a time frame. You just hit me at the wrong time right. for that to come up. As long as we, we acknowledge it and ask for the grace of other people in that, I, I think it, it makes the, it makes the relationships better. Yeah. I, I think an apology is something for a lot of people, it's hard to do because it's admitting they've just done something wrong. Um, but it, it's also for some people a hard thing to accept because it's like, well, there's got to be some reason why you did that. Instead mm -hmm. of like it was, you know, it was just a momentary thing, whether it had been you or somebody else, I would have snapped. Um, and, you know, immediately people, but why did you say that? What is it about? Da -da -da -da. And they get into it and it's like, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, the person was angst at the time and snapped at you, accept the apology and move on. And too often they don't. No. Because what, what happens instead is, oh my God, yeah. I can't believe you did that. And, <laughs> and then they go tell a whole bunch of people instead yes. of saying, Sarah, you know, you really ticked me off when you did mm -hmm. that or that really hurt me. Yeah. I think it's more vulnerable to say I was hurt by what yeah. you just did or said. Instead, we go and search for reinforcement. Yes. That's, that's Sarah. You are absolutely right. You know, the one time, mm -hmm. blah, 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 right? The one time, oh, really? She did that to you too? Oh, okay. And then so so forth becomes the gossip real, yeah. right? Which, and you I'm, know, gathers momentum and, mm -hmm. you know, next thing it is of all, you know, I call it the 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 pimple that becomes the volcanic eruption, yeah. you know, and it, and it just, you know, some tiny little thing that, you know, irritated you now suddenly is world war three, four, five, whatever. Uh, well, absolutely. And, and depending on which circle of influence you're in, um, that can be catastrophic. Yes. I mean, you know, when you think of, of, of family, I think of, of how many families fall apart because of this type of activity, you know, that, this is just not it's not healthy because we're not just we're just not processing things no we let us bottle up and then we fight or or worse um when we think of i think of children in school i, I one i feel grateful that i'm older so i didn't <laughs> grow up with the social media stuff that's going yes, on. yes yes that um bullying and how that can can impact because it is always on and then oh by the way I can tell not just the two people I saw in the hallway, which the, right. back in my day was like yes. whoever you saw in the hallway, that's who you talk to. Um, but now it's, it's I, I'm literally talking to the world when I post oh. this stuff. And the person on the receiving end is like, well, they can feel like the whole world's against them. Right. That's not fair. 
you know. Yep. And, and then, there's been so many suicides because of that, too, yes, because they yes. feel the whole world is against them. Yes, yes. And there's no one reaching in no. to help to help pull that out. See, right. You know, no. Let's talk about your self-talk. Yeah. Because you can't control their talk, but you're no. controlling yours and it right. works back into the center. Um, in the job and workplace, this is why people lose jobs, literally, is because this negative swirl starts happening. Mm. And if you don't have the, the right connections or somebody spoils connections by spreading half-truths about your, your competence, your abilities, mm. and that sort of thing. Yes, that now now your self-preservation yeah. Button, and the, yeah. and in the wrong position comes to fruition because somebody is like, yeah, you really are in the wrong position. You don't know what you're doing. So I'm hearing mm -hmm. multiple times because right. somebody somebody did a damn good job of the broadcasting it. it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately. Um, and, and frankly, I, I think in part, now that we're seeing this, the great resignation, I think it's part of what's feeding into it, not yes. just the not just the pandemic re recognition of oh my goodness, I kind of don't like doing this, right? <laughs> I think people are coming through this. I don't like how things are, so I'm going right. to change it. But there's more to that. It's like what do I don't I like? I don't like how I was treated. Ah, huh? okay, that's really the heart of it, right? Mm. It's a relationship with the organization. It's a relationship with the boss. Or it's a relationship with the coworkers, or all of those. And which you now, now we're seeing huge turnover, voluntary turnover, even to the point people say, I don't care if I don't have another job to go to. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it anymore. Well, what right. if you end up broke? I won't. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forget about that part. I won't. I just don't like the relationship anymore. Right. I've had it. Let's break it. I think the other thing too is the defense of our own truth. You know, mm. especially in the workplace where somebody's attacked you on your competency and everybody then gets on that bandwagon and then your entire career is undermined. Mm. And it's like you want to ignore the other people and just not, you know, don't buy into it, don't feed it. But on the other hand, you want to defend yourself. And it's like a very, very hard line there. It's like, what do you do to defend yourself that doesn't sound, you know, um, like you're defending yourself, you know, really, because it's because then it, it they they gather in numbers up against you. And I think, of course, if they were all in the boardroom and you go, OK, this is actually what was said. Sorry if you mis misconstrued it, but I would like to ask every single one of you your opinion of me now and my work and ask them individually in the boardroom. You'll see them backpedal like crazy. Yes. Right. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> when maliciousness loves numbers and it gathers moss you know it just gathers and gathers how do you defend yourself against someone and what is, what is your reaction is it just call it quits or do you stand up tall do you turn the other cheek i mean what do you do in a situation like that well and, and yeah that's a great question so there are a couple of things that, that i suggest in and in, in it comes to having your um, your own board of directors, meaning you have your um, your trusted advisors into you, mm. meaning however you want to develop. You should be establishing this over time because the people will switch in and out depending on where you on you are in your life's journey. It's great because when we start out, we always like to have the the older mentor mm -hmm. right but they retire and they go I yeah. don't, I, i'm done i'm done <laughs> yes <laughs> have a nice On life to the golf. i love you <laughs> yeah. i love you but you know yeah. I, I, I can't or you know they just age out of of whatever the industry or, or that sort of thing in professional setting um personal setting of course you can always find this you know if you're a spiritual person mm -hmm. Your mentor, your mentor. I'm oh, sorry, your 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 priest or or whatever religion you 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 uh, practice, you know, somebody to talk to that's not going to judge you. You're it's right. just going to feed into what you need. Mm -hmm. So whatever your problem statement, I'm a scientific person, so I say whatever your problem statement is. First of all, you have to define it. Mm -hmm. And and get to is it a symptom or is it a root? So why I say that is a, 
a symptom is I'm tired of people telling me mm. whatever all the time. Okay, you, you add that all the time to it. It's a symptom of something else. Why are they saying that? Is there a certain situation that they're saying that? And you got to get a little bit more specific because then you can diagnose it. Then you can take it to a mentor and this board of trusted advisors and say, okay, help me, help me out. Because yeah. I keep hearing this. Is this real? Mm. Because what you want to do is not place it in your brain yeah. as real. You don't want to add it to your self-talk because as you said, you know, that negativity loves mm. numbers, mm -hmm. the numbers implanted in. It's like, well, they all must be right. Cause how, right. Could, how could they all see that? And I not, they must be right. We're too, we go too easily yes. into the Yelp review of ourselves right. <laughs> instead of our own <laughs> strength and define the strength. I'm getting to the answer to your question. Define your strength is you need that at least one trusted advisor. I suggest an odd number, just in case you get two. It's like, oh yeah, that mm. you do do that. <laughs> yeah. To help you balance it out, to talk through that. And you build that ahead of time and over time. Like mm -hmm. I said, it will change as we go through our journey. Um, but you certainly, I, I like somebody who's not in the same quote unquote organization mm -hmm. as I am. In other words, if it's a family thing, I'm not going to go talk to somebody in my family about another family member because now that sounds gossipy. Right. I need that external person to say, hey, I, can we, I need to bounce some ideas off you. I just need right. somebody to talk to, right? And it, it goes beyond venting. It, it goes, yeah. like, this is, what do you think? And this, do I really do that? Because you've created a safe place with them. Mm -hmm. and, and you're looking and, for a solution, right? Yeah. Not a validation for, or solution. Right. You, well, first of all, you, you want somebody to listen mm -hmm. right we all want that first but then yeah we're, we are seeking a solution typically and if we're we we first we have to make sure we're clear with them i'm going to share with you what happened i really want your insight because we often have to give people permission to speak into us and i will say that sometimes that varies by um you know gender mm -hmm. You know, a guy will happily tell you how to fix everything. Yes. <laughs> but sometimes we don't want that. We just want you to listen. Can you yeah. just listen to what I'm saying? Um, but other times, you know, sometimes women won't tell you how to fix something. They go, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. we're very good at empathizing, but yeah, sympathizing, but not necessarily <clears throat> saying, oh, you should do this, this, and this. All right. Because we, we were a little hesitant to do that. Mm -hmm. So you think we have to tell people, whoever's on the other side of us. Yeah, I just don't want, I, I do want to vent, but I want, I want you to play the observer and how, how would you respond to this, right? Give me insight of how to be different because what you're looking for is behavioral tendencies that you, you, you want to break. Um, and you just need that extra set of ears and eyes to mm. go, hmm, that was weird or, hmm, yeah, no, they're right. W wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that person, because they're telling you in a way that's not so um, personal, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that can really speak into it and help you solve it. Well, you know, if, if we also have to look at this big word jealousy. Mm -hmm. You know, is somebody attacking you because they're jealous of you, jealous of your position, jealous of your relationships with other people? You know, um, jealousy has a very ugly head and very often more than one head. And they can really stir things up out of jealousy, you know, to get back at you because they're jealous. They either want to be like you or, you know, want to be in that same position and they can't be. Um, so jealousy is something that is a very, very unhealthy um, because it does bring out a negativity in people. Oh, very much so. I mean, it just, just hearing that reminds me of... Um, a co-worker who was a boss at one point so so the scenario was she was my boss we became co-workers and then our boss um said hey i need you her to focus on on this one aspect of your job so i'm going to take this area of responsibility and he shifted it to me hmm. now this is an example, in my opinion, an example of kind of a jealousy or undermining, because I think mm -hmm. they kind of go in hand, hand in hand. 
we we had a, a candidate who was being interviewed to join our team at that time to join the team that was being moved i had spoken to that person as part of the interview process because it just that's what we did we, we did multiple executive interviews with somebody when we we're bringing them on uh, this person who was my boss slash colleague called the candidate up and said hey i'm not so sure you want to work for this company now because you're not going to be reporting to me you're going to be reporting to brenda mm -hmm. and the candidate told me after the fact because the candidate right. is like we really hit it off i really like working with you i'm, I'm excited oh. and i'm like yeah me too I'm at, yeah so she took the job but and came onto the team but she told me that afterwards I'm like seriously yes <laughs> why oh, 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 oh wow right yeah it, it was kind of like oh um <clears throat> And that type of effort continued because mm. the person was so hurt by that section of work being moved off of her to me. And oh, by the way, I, I believe she still thought, no, I'm superior to her because I was her boss. You, you know what I mean? It, it's mm. like, I'm yeah. better than. So back yeah. to the comparison, I am better yes. than. Yeah. So why was that sectioned off and shifted over there? And, and literally, as soon as, um, our boss, our collective boss, switched and changed in leadership. <clears throat> she worked with the new leader, um, and and did that kind of gossip spreading of you know she's not good, she doesn't know what she's doing. And as soon as he came in, he moved stuff back, not under her, but just kind of spread it out and like sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I remember way way back. I mean, I've had you know various confrontations in various jobs but this was actually just a, a mum's group and I'd been made chairwoman mm -hmm. and um, anything that we purchased uh, was voted on but I was allowed to spend twenty dollars and the kids were about to graduate and go to school and I mm -hmm. wanted to throw them a party and this is the 80s so you know I'd bought them some neon shoelaces you know that were really funky and fun at the time and it had cost 20 bucks and I'm in the midst of kind of discussing the party we're going to do and all of that in the whole agenda. And this one mom got up and with venom, I mean, spitting out of it, who the hell do you think you are making decisions, you know, ladder? And she just laid into me and everybody was astonished. Nobody said anything. I felt like, you know, a tornado had just hit me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll pay for it myself. And I continued to throw the party. And I made those meetings short and concise. I had really great guest speakers. And it was only at the end of the year, when we had the end of year party, uh, that people came up to me. And this woman came up to me and started chatting to me. And then somebody came up to me afterwards. She said, why were you nice to her? She was so horrible to you. I said, yeah. I don't have to reduce myself to the same level. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I... Mm -hmm whatever she was going through at the time you know i'm over it and uh, i will be polite and courteous to anyone and then i had a whole load of apologies from people i'm sorry we didn't stand up for you i'm sorry that we weren't there for you thank you for stepping up and you know doing a great job but it it took them that long to kind of stand up and most of it was is because they were embarrassed one of them was a sister to the woman who did it. Oh. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. Mm. They didn't know how to come to the defense. They didn't, they were, everybody was so shattered by it because it was really viciously done, the tone, everything. Um, yes, I went home and cried. You know, I felt like a tornado had hit me. And mm. then it's, well, um, I'm just going to methodically and very quickly and very concisely do my job and that's it. And but it, it did obviously shake my confidence. But at the same time, it was, okay, all right, I know what I'm up against. And so defense went up. And I didn't do, as you said, the kind of that connector fluff stuff. I just went straight into agendas. But it took them that long to come up and say, I'm sorry, we didn't come to your defense. But they eventually did it. That's okay. I wasn't looking for that. But it is for so many people they just don't know what to say or how to defend or how to react to a situation so they'd rather go la 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 that didn't happen yes and i would say that the person who who had done this um 
back to those five leadership voices would be a great example of what I would call a pioneer in the sense that um, their, their weapon of choice, if you want to call that, mm -hmm. is a grenade launcher. Yeah. <laughs> so when they, 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 when they let loose, they obliterate the person oh. that they're trying to <laughs> yeah. them. and everybody around is like, whoa, Shrapnel. That's not happening to me. <laughs> right, oh, right. So sorry. Yes. So sorry, you are no longer with us. But <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, I'm yeah. not doing that. I'm not going to be subjected to that. And that's what shuts them down. Yes. And in organizations, that's what creates more of that unhealthy culture. Mm. In our community, my belief is that this will cause us a lot of what we have, you know, that unsupportedness, that uh, anger, that just angst to back and forth at each other because I'm right, you're wrong. Right. I'm right. gonna obliterate you and and it, it doesn't need to be that way. Um and then so people are like, well what do I do? I don't want to I don't it goes back to a core need kind of if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And my safety's now suddenly threatened. Um yeah, we're not that good of a friend, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. If you need anything, let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Like, do you need me to help you stand back up? But other than that, it, 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 it starts to get into what am I willing to risk right. for you? Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could talk all day about relationships. And you know, I know that you do have another show to go to today. But, you know, the thing about relationships, you know, it really does come back to knowing who you are. And I really do want people to go back and listen to our other show um, because you really do talk about in all those different types, you know, who are you? And recognizing who you are. And there is no one better than the other. There's right. just one that you resonate with and that's who you are, own it, right? Both the, the you know, intricacies of it and, and the glory of it, you know, as every single personality trait has a flaw somewhere. Don't focus on the flaw, be aware of it, but <laughs> look at who, you know, the, the gift that you were given. And, and this is your way of communicating relationships and uh, your interaction. And this is who you really are. When you're confident in that, you don't need to defend yourself, right? Because you know who you are. You don't take an attack personally, right? Because it's, you know who you are. They just are not reading you, right? Because clearly there's a, a conflict more in the communication rather than in the persons. And mm -hmm. it's, Knowing who you are, I think is so important that I loved that show. We're going through all of those different ones, you know, because you can go to and go, yeah, I am like that. And that, <laughs> own it, own it. That's who you are, right? Good or bad, it's that's who you are. And that's how you interact. That's how other people perceive you. That is your whole relationship base there. And if we know who we are, if, whether you are in business, because you've been 25 years in leadership business, whether it's in business or in just the business of life, mm -hmm. we know to we know who we are, and that relationship we have with ourselves is also going to be the one that will resonate out with other people and attract people to you. Yes, absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> you know your know yourself to lead yourself, so yes. you can lead others. Yes, it impacts. It, like I said, it's it's the stone. If you think of it as a target. You're the, you're the, you're the, where the stone gets dropped and the ripples go out and they're just a strong wave and you can role model what you want those circles of influence to experience by being that person. So, yeah. and, and we all have that, that power and we all have that responsibility to, to do that. And that's kind of being kind to each other, but it's more than that. It's saying it's okay to be yourself. Mm-hmm. And to show up and be for each other and, and um, you know, learn how to be forgiving. Also understand that we all have saboteurs because they're, they're the little voices that run around in our heads. They're like, mm -hmm. you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't. But on the other hand, they can be our biggest champion. Yes. When you find the right voice who's like, oh, yeah. Well, remember all these times I did this, this, and this. Remember, yeah. we did all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we should be remembering. That's what we should be telling people. And oh, by the way, <clears throat> that's what people see, right? They see all your achievements. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you've ever had the, you know, the, 
the the beautiful experience of having somebody um, introduce you on a show or for for a, a you know awards banquet or anything, and you're like, "Wow, who is that person?" I know Wait a minute, that was me, right? That, and I, I say that kind of in joking, but it is true. It's like, well, gosh, if I'm doing my own intro, I, I did do all that stuff because you don't tell people, you know, right. You know, this, this relationship broke up. She lost yeah. this, this yeah. happened. Was, <laughs> you don't tell them all the, the woes. You, you tell them all the great stuff. And it's like, we need to remind ourselves of that. I think we don't do it enough. No, we should do it. And we should do it for others and give everybody um, a congratulations or a, a piece of gratitude, I guess yes. I would call it. Yes. Yeah. I don't think we kind of point out to people how awesome they are, even in their flawsomeness. You know, yes. it's that, you know, one thing I celebrate in doing all of these shows, everybody has had a journey to take. Everybody has had some adversity, some challenges, but they chose to go through it and it made them stronger, wiser. Um, it made them more courageous. It made them become who they really are. And now in turn, you know, passing that on through their services. And I think that is the best of their humanity is because they were willing to go through their process of life in self-discovery. And, you know, it's the same with relationships, isn't it? It's the same with the relationship with self. That discovery of yourself is going to be ongoing right to the end. You're always going to discover something new. Gosh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, I didn't know I thought that way. Or I, you know, I didn't know I could attract this, you know, and it's, and that's what kind of the wonderment of life is in that keeps us alive to kind of there's always new discoveries and I don't be afraid of those discoveries don't even be afraid of your flaws know what they are be aware of them when they're raising their head you know how to suppress them keep them in check and how to bring out that beautiful person that you really are because we're all in there and you know let let comparison go, let jealousy go, let insecurity go, let all of that stuff go, because those are the demons. Those are the things that hold you back. And when you face those and go, uh uh, sorry, you're not going to live here, uh, you'll just discover how, again, awesome and, and how you can thrive in life, right? It's a choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you have your company, Inspiring Company Culture. Mm -hmm. which I love because it's all about inspiring the culture of, um, you know, whether you're in business or whether it's the home front, you know, whether it's just you're, you're in, um, you know, in a, in a group, you know, we want to inspire each other. And mm -hmm. in that inspiration, that's where we truly see the nuggets come through, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. So where, what are you doing now? Where, what's next for you? Yeah, great question. Um, so I am I'm still trying to wrap up an online course, <laughs> which uh, I will eventually get it done. Um, but uh, the, the work is on, it's on two fronts, really. And now that you mentioned inspire, inspiring, it, it's, um, I provide an offering called Invincible Team. So if you have a team of folks, how do you become not just a hyper productive, but unlock the capabilities of everybody mm. on the team and really become so that that what you know I mentioned the great resignation well, that shouldn't impact you because a high performing team wants to stay together they yeah. want to win it's just it's just self-fulfilling in a very very positive way to help teams figure out how to do that mm. by focusing on five you know kind of core areas uh, of relationship being one of those how do we create healthy relationships um, but then for the individual too, I work with individuals who, who want to become, as I call them, indispensable leaders. So it doesn't mean you have to have a team necessarily. It's mm. like, but how do I get better at my leadership skills, mm. even if it's just of myself? Yes. How do I find my, my rhythm, so to speak? How do I get rid of my saboteurs, mm. my, self, my negative self-talk in the right mindset so that I become... Um, all I can be, all mm. that I want to be, and then I'm what am I imagining? Because it, what do I envision my life to be? How do I do that through leading myself? And then I can bring a team along too. That's even more fun, yeah, right? Exactly. Well, you can, you can invite the team so much better when mm -hmm. they know what they're coming to. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do people want to be a part of the particular team? They're inspired. 
mm-hmm. by someone in that team. Oh, mm-hmm. I really love their vision. Oh, I really love their mission. I really love what they're, who they are and what they're up to. I want to be a part of this, right? Mm-hmm. So be that inspiration that you are, right? Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. I'm going to use that. <laughs> so how do people get hold of you? Yeah, you know, the best way is to just send me an email to brenda at inspiringcompanyculture.com. Excellent. I do invite people, please, to go back and listen to the other show. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to go, oh, God, that's me. Oh, really? Oh, mm, that's food for thought. Really, please. It was a very exciting show in real life. I referred to it quite a bit afterwards. And so all you have to do is just put in her name. Would you actually spend, uh, spell your name out for people? Because you go to selfdiscoverymedia.com and they put in your name. But for people who are just audioing, would you please uh, spell your name out for them? Sure. Brenda, B-R-E-N-D-A, Batista, B-A-T-I-S-T-A, uh, and there's a hyphen, Malahan. so if you're looking on LinkedIn, there's, there's another name, but Brenda Batista. Wonderful. Please go back and listen to the other show. I'm sure this one was a short and sweet one. We're going to have it back on again because this is, we could talk about relationships all day long because it's in everything we are, in everything we do. There isn't anything you do in life that isn't relationship based. There is nothing you do that isn't relationship. And the better the relationship we have with self, the better relationship we're going to have with everyone else. And so the more we understand ourselves, the better. Please listen to the other show. As I said, I have Brenda back on again. She's just got far too much information that we need to pull out. So I really enjoy this. Thank you so much, Brenda, for being with us here again today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And to everyone else, remember, love thyself. Really, that's where it starts. Know who you are. Don't compare. Don't bring jealousy into it. Don't bring envy into it, insecurity into it. Look at all those demons and go, I'm sorry, you don't belong here. Start looking at what your beautiful personality is, how to really use it in a fruitful fruitful way, invitational and inspiring way, and that will open up all sorts of doors for you. Until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.